um, it's lovely to have you here. And I'm going to straight away invite two of our hosts, um, Yitzhi and Alyssa, two of the students at Paradis, are going to open the teaching today by a Jewish teaching. Um, and you should just keep in mind that even though it's freezing cold in Jerusalem, we're having our first winter just now. We, we didn't have really have winter until now. And so it doesn't feel like spring is just around the corner. But spring is just around the corner in terms of the, the rhythm of the year that we keep by the lunar calendar. Because this month that we're in is the time when the first blossoms are supposed to appear, the blossoms of the almond tree. And so we thought that we would do two things with this gathering. We would explore trees and nature and the new year for trees as it approaches us. But we would also think about our global responsibility to the environment, which is a theme as most of you know, uh, LIDA Interfaith has been following with the climate repentance and uh, that climate repentance project, which took place just two months ago. So still continuing that effort in climate repentance, looking at what religions have to say about their responsibility to this earth. And this is a project that will be ongoing. We'll look at it in the Elijah Summer School coming up in um, end of July, beginning of August. And we will continue to, to look at it in years to come because this is perhaps one of the most urgent issues facing all of us. And also something that unites us as people of faith, that responsibility to the created earth um, as part of our honoring of the creator of the earth. So over to, I'm going to ask Yitz and Alyssa to take my place here in front of the camera and begin. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. We're so happy to be here. We're so happy to see you all here in person and to welcome everyone joining us on Zoom. Um, I'm Yitzi. I'm a year student and social action fellow at Pardes. And my name is Alyssa. I'm also a year student and social action fellow at Pardes. Yeah, and we're really happy to be hosting Crank together in Jerusalem here. Um, this is a pluralistic study space um, for Jews, which means that there's Jews of every background and denominations and um, observance. And, and so it's really exciting that we're sort of extending that pluralism with this event out to um, the multiple faiths that um, pray together in this city. Mm -hmm. And so today we just wanted to talk with you all a little bit about the holiday of Tubishvat and to bring a few Jewish texts and practices um, which show how our relationship to nature and cultivation of mindfulness towards nature um, can be helpful for our relationships with God and with other people and with the environment itself. Okay, so a little bit about Tubishvat is the Tubishvat is a Jewish holiday coming up in just a couple days. And the name Tu is a, it's a, it literally just means the 15th of Shvat. So very creative, <laughs> but, but it's just, um, it's one of four different new years that we have in the Jew Jewish tradition of ways to mark one year uh, passing in time. And so this new year is specifically for the trees and every tree turns one year older on the 15th of Shvat. And this is important for a number of reasons for things like taxes and tithing, there's a practice not to eat the fruits of, of a tree until it is four years old. Of course, many trees do not grow fruit until after that point, but for the first three years, um, we don't eat the fruits um, from our trees. And some Jewish communities have a custom of doing a Tubishvat Seder, in which there are all kinds of fruits and special blessings and um, fruits and foods that are of the seven species native to Israel. Um, and those species include dates, pomegranates, figs, Grapes, olives, barley, and wheat. I nice. think those are seven. <laughs> <laughs> um, agriculture. Yeah. Like yeah, thank you. Did you the agriculture is great. Um, <laughs> well, so next we wanted to share a song that a lot of people sing around Tubishvat that has to do with um, how we can relate to nature as people and as Jews as well. And it's um, a song, hopefully all of you got a sheet that was passed around. It's a song by Naomi 
Shemer that's based upon the words of Rabbi Nachman of Breslov, who was an important Hasidic uh, teacher. Hasidic is um, one of the movements of Judaism that started in the 1700s, and he was around um, at the during the late 17 and early 1800s. So a very important spiritual master that is still widely studied today. And the song is based on his teaching that every single blade of grass utters a unique song to God. Um, so it's really just this taking mindfulness to the most detailed level, going out in the field, going out in the forest and seeing every blade of grass, every tree as holy. Um, and he was a big proponent of a practice called heat go to do which was where people went out into the forest and talked to God um, and really experienced the holiness of their connection to themselves and nature and the divine. Um, and he said, it's, it is very good to serve God rever reverently among them, among the blades of grass and among the trees. Um, and he also talked about how in seeing the holiness of every single blade, we can see the uniqueness, everyone has a different song. And I think similarly, we can celebrate all of our own unique songs. Um, and I think that's something that's beautiful about what we're doing here. We're getting together and sharing the uniqueness that come from our own faith traditions and bringing them together um, into a common field, or you could say pardes, which means orchard. Uh, many different trees, one beautiful orchard. So I'll sing the song now. And if you know it or if you catch on the melody, you can please join along or just sing Yai Dai Dai or La La La. <laughs> Everything, so many things come from the ground, so too do we. In Bereshit, in the beginning of, of the book of Genesis, we learned that God created human beings also from the earth, from the ground. And this is a little bit of a creative reading, of course, but we could think of ourselves too as pre hadama of fruits of the earth. And that coming, coming ourselves from that earth, we remember that we are a part of nature. Um, and that remembering that can be, can be very, very important um, and very helpful. And so now that we're at this time of year, celebrating trees, celebrating fruits, celebrating you know, the weather that gives rise to, to these trees and this growth and this, this new life and this, this food which nourishes and sustains us, um, Yitzhi and I would encourage all of you to think a little bit about how you might be like a tree. So what roots you? What are your fruits? Like what, what gifts do you have to give others, to give the world, to give your communities? Beautiful. Yeah, and I think that when we all find our own roots, whether it's in our traditions or just our sense of self and grow like beautiful branches, um, I think that can really allow us to come even more deeply into community like this and connect with um, other fruit trees, other and the songs that come from each tree and each blade of grass. The Hebrew word for a human being, as a word that probably most of you know, Adam, Adam, Adam. And the Hebrew word for earth is Adama, because we came from the earth. And I was just studying the first Hebrew poetess, poet, Esther Raab, and she writes a beautiful uh, poem where she says, as, as a female human being, she's more connected to the earth. Adam put the female form on it and gives her that connection. And she was one of the, the forerunners of the modern Hebrew language. So thinking about that connection between earth and, 
and our humanity and our feminine humanity in particular. So my great pleasure to invite Reverend Daniel Eichler from Bethlehem to, to make the presentation uh, from a Christian perspective on this wonderful question. And um, I just I mentioned before, but I'm going to say it again. It's so good you're back, Daniel. Come and take the hot seat. <laughs> Thank you for allowing me to be here with you and to be able to share uh, some of the things uh, uh, according to what I understood that I need to share about trees in the Bible. We are in the year of 2023. Do you know what happened on the third day? Creation. Of creation. So we go back uh, and think because a couple couple of days ago, uh, we do have a home church and I preached uh, on the number three. That was the whole message. If you like, I can send you the podcast of it, <laughs> but it is in the Arabic language. But uh, according to Genesis 1, uh, uh, 11 to 13, uh, said, then God said, let the land produce vegetation, vegetation seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruits with seeds in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so when God said something and God commands something, and that is the first living that happened. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seeds according to their kinds and trees bearing fruits with seeds in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good and there was an evening and that and there was morning the third day taken from Luke 13 6 to 9 and uh, then it said then he told this parable that Jesus Christ a man had a fig tree growing in his yard and he went to look for fruit on it but did not find any so he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, for three years now, I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it you use up the soil? Uh, Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. The man is put in the, uh, in the garden or in earth to take care of the trees. If the tree is, does not uh, bear fruit, then what use is it for the soil? It needs to be taken off. But uh, this also shows us God's mercy and love that uh, God gives us always uh, lots of time, years and maybe decades for us to get back and align uh, with him, with the creator. Matthew 12, 33, say, make, make a tree good and its fruit will be good. Or make a tree bad and its fruits will be bad. For a tree, it's recognized by its fruits. It's talking about the person, how his uh, fruit, his deeds, his actions will reflect on the inside. There is a, there is an Arabic say say what is on the heart the tongue speaks, so from the heart the tongue speaks, and that's why uh, we need just to pray with uh, David, uh, what he prayed, create in me a clean heart, oh God. And uh, the last uh, two verses, uh, John fifteen, John fifteen one to five, Jesus said, I am. The true vine and father is the gardener. Now he goes a little bit also deeper. He cuts off every branch, every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so it will be more fruitful. You are already clean because of the words I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also in, in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. You, you cannot have fruit without the tree itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither uh, can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are branches. 
If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you cannot do anything. Unique to Christianity, uh, as it certainly is compared to Judaism, the idea of Jesus as the tree of life. And that is, again, for, because for us, the tree of life is one of the great mysteries. We really don't know what the tree of life is. There's a beautiful Kabbalistic, again, the, the uh, mystical form of Judaism, vision of the tree of life. Which we're not sure it's the same as the tree of good and evil or a separate tree. There's discussion about that. But there's a, uh, images of it with roots both in heaven and on earth. The tree has roots both heaven and earth, which is just a very powerful image and certainly a powerful image for human beings to ask the question um, about our rootedness in the earth and our connection to heavenward. We have uh, Professor Mann, uh, Gurinder Singh Mann, and he's a Sikh. And perhaps he is able to just give us a little uh, insight or teach us to seek uh, thinking on trees. What I would like to say that the metaphors you are using, uh, they, they come straight. Uh, God is called the farmer. He is the, the biggest farmer Ooh. and he is also the gardener. And the tree has several layers. You, you know, I'm, I look forward to listening to um, our, you know, next presentations. But there is a lot about the tree. Please remember the six, um, the, the six tradition emerged in the landscape, uh, which is famous for water. So there is water and greenery. That is what they were part of. And Nanak, the founder of the tradition, actually, he literally says it. Uh, God can be understood by looking at nature. Or perhaps even more precisely, that is the best way to understand uh, nature. And he uses a very interesting word there which is a legal term, shanakhat. If you would like to identify God, the best way to do is to go and be part of the natural landscape. Please have a seat, uh, Sheikh, and uh, share with us some thoughts about trees and nature and Islam. Salam alaikum. I'm so happy to be with you all here. And thank you for your invitation and to be here as a brothers and sister. So painful the way how we live in it today. Our heart broken. I'm an Arab. I'm Muslim and I'm Palestinian. By law, I am nothing. I born here from family live on Mount of Olives. Your stories are so powerful and beautiful uh, that the walls that we put between ourselves, the, physic the physical walls are one thing, but the barriers we put up are much worse and much more dangerous, the barriers we put between people. Uh, we've been talking about trees and nature, and we had a beautiful presentation from these lovely young students about the uh, idea that the Jewish New Year for trees is coming up, Tu Bishvat, is coming up and the significance of plants. And Daniel, Reverend Daniel, told us about how in Christianity, and he told us many Things. But one of the ideas is Jesus is the tree of life, which was a very powerful teaching for me. And I wonder in Islam, do you have a, a story or a, a teaching about trees, 
that you could share with us, Chef Ibrahim? The tree is life. When we have two words say, Tin, the figs. Or zaytun, they never go to the farm to plant an olive trees because in the, the time when they plant the olive trees, they cannot eat it. As they could say, there is a word called karma. Karma is the the, the the figs and the grapes because the the fellah, the farmer when he go to big the olives he needs something to eat before that they make in everywhere there is wells and god build wells in every village if you pay attention to every village build on wells there is a well of water from god is the river coming? The tree, the tree come from bring language from God. When the tree are come bring rain, because the connection between the earth and the sky is the tree talking and the flower and bring and that, and that is something holy. Tin with zaytun, a tin as figs and the and the karma, the grapes and the figs. Yeah, so we use the word in Hebrew, as you know, kerem, which is the yeah, same as karma. karma. And and I think what you just said is so powerful because Reverend Daniel read us from the second chapter of the book of Genesis, where it says that that God put the man in the garden of Eden, and it said that the trees hadn't sprouted because there hadn't been rain yet. And you just made that connection that this is the divine. First, you know, before when the fruit on the tree came, it's what come? The flower. Yes. It's dancing. Mm. You go just to look to the flower. And that's why we talking and praying and, and thank God for the flower. Is the light in the heart. Mm -hmm. That's what we believe. We, we've been now in all the villages. We go out to the mosque because you have to know where we are now today. The rain came late and scary the foreman. When the, the land don't get wet, will be crying. God sent us. I remember as a child, our woman turned then closes upside down, sadness and crying for the rain to come. Oh. I still remember that. Yes. Today, we don't pay attention to that love, love of God who brought us together here to live one for another. Yeah. We are the same children of Abraham and Abin. We are the same of Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. And we have to appreciate God to let us talk together. Every one of you, there's no word in the children of Adam and Eve to say Christian, Muslim, Jew, Buddha, Buddhist, mm -hmm. or who you are, black or white, we are all one. And do you know what was so wonderful? You were just talking about, you went to the mosque to pray for rain and in the synagogues this last week, we've had special prayers for rain that we don't normally say. And isn't it wonderful to think that together, the power of the prayers from the mosques and the prayers from the synagogue together have brought the rain um, our prayers were answered and they, it may be because we were both doing them, not one. The both of us. God do it not for me and you. No, for, for the creatures. For, for the ant in the, in the, the ground. For the little creatures. For the trees and for our children. 